Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. Now, this video of me working on this Xbox is going to come out over the Christmas period. So what I want to quickly do before the video starts is I want to wish all my subscribers and all my viewers a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get the video started. Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is a faulty crystal Xbox. Now this Xbox belongs to a friend. Um, I actually gave it to my friend, um, but it's developed a fault. Um, now, my friends watched my previous videos where I modded my Xbox, um, and he asked if I could do the same with this. Um, so he got this out of storage because he stored it away and it's developed a fault uh, while it's in storage now he's telling me that when the Xbox been on for a little while it powers off and powers on by itself um, which is a little strange if you ask me um, that would possibly indicate that there might be something wrong with the power supply um, but yeah, I'm going to look into it, guys. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to power on the Xbox. And as you can see, it's got the Evo X BIOS on there. So it's um, it's a modded Xbox, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit and play this for like 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, and I just want to see... Um, if that problem rears its head where it powers off and powers on by itself it's a little bit of a strange one that guys I'm thinking maybe the power supply may be browning out um, and then recovering uh, really quick but it's enough to power on and off the Xbox so yeah I'm gonna sit here for 20 minutes half an hour uh, play a few games uh, and see if I can get this Xbox to uh, show its symptoms nice he's got off life 2 on there that should take up half an hour and I'm back I've been playing off life for like 20 minutes half an hour um, now the system was fine it didn't power off um, but I found something very 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 strange happening with this Xbox when I went to power it off myself um, now what I was doing was I was playing off life but off an hour went back by and I in game reset the console you can do that with the Xbox con controller if you've got a mod chip it's left trigger right trigger back and black and it will boot you back to the dash um, but then what I went to do was I went down here to power off the Xbox and watch what happened it really surprised me when I did it so I'm gonna see if I can film this all in one right so I'm down where it says power off and watch what the Xbox does it's very strange so I'm gonna do it now power off and there you go it powered off and fired straight back up again um, yeah it should not have done that it should have powered off and stayed off so there's an indication of a fault straight away um, and that's pretty much what my friend was saying it powers off and then powers straight back on again uh, and I've just shown you it there that's strange that is that's absolutely weird and I'll show you the difference between that and a reboot because people may be going oh, oh it's just a, a reboot so here's what a reboot looks like I'm on uh, the reboot if I reboot 
and you'll see all what happens is it soft resets you don't even get a full boot you just get the Xbox logo uh, and then you get the boot into the dash and there we go um, but if I power this off watch what happens see if it does it again see if it comes back on so I'm going to power off now and there you go it fires straight back up again that is some weird shit, guys <laughs> that is absolutely mental so that's pretty much what my friend is saying is happening um, it powers off and power straight back on um, now I didn't get it to power off by itself uh, but you can see the problem there it, it's powering off and powering on by itself that's some weird shit, guys <laughs> I'm gonna have to find out what's going on there um, that's a bit of a bummer because I don't think that's power supply related that's system management controller chip related and um, that takes care of the power and the reset and everything like that so if that's gone for it um, it's not good times <laughs> back again I want to show you another problem guys I had to turn it off at the mains um, because I couldn't power down the Xbox it kept firing straight back up again uh, now it's powered off at the mains and I've switched the mains plug back on look what's happening now I can't power the Xbox on by the power button. What the f is wrong with this thing? This is insane. Now I'll prove to you it's the power button, right? You could hear it clunking, listen. Right? So then I'm pressing the power button, but watch what happens when I press the eject button. The Xbox fires up. Absolutely insane. There is some crazy sh** on this Xbox, guys. Uh, let me see if it's doing that power off uh, power up again it's like the dashboard boot let's go down to uh, power off there yeah, I'm on the power off you can see it it's power off see if it fires straight back up again yep <laughs> what the f <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just know this one's going to be a pain in the arse. It's going to be an absolute pain in the arse. I just know it. Oh, I just hope it's not the system management controller that's gone. Oh dear. It works perfectly fine. It works absolutely fine. Just got to work out why it's powering off and powering on by itself. Oh. <laughs> Time to get inside this Xbox. Now to get inside the Xbox, you need a couple of Torx bits. Uh, the first one you're going to need is a T10, and the second one you're going to need is a T20.
what I've done guys is I just want to hook up and test the power button now here's the ribbon that connects to the Xbox's motherboard now pin 1 is ground and pin 2 is the actual button and I've got this connected up through some old LED legs I've just poked it into the connector um, so it goes off to my multimeter it's on continuity and I'm just going to test the button to see if the button's okay so let's push the power button and hopefully you can hear that beeping and I'm not picking up any scratchiness from it which would be an indicator there's something wrong with the button uh, the easiest test to do that is to push it and then wiggle your finger and as you can see it's perfectly fine if I show you my multimeter it's actually reading 2.5 ohms so uh, yeah that's that button's okay there's nothing wrong with that button guys so it's got to be something on the motherboard that's that's gone wrong what I want to do now is actually remove the actual motherboard it's just going to make it a little bit easier to work on I ain't got the outer case in the way you see it's got a mod chip in it it's actually a duo times two naughty boy <laughs> so yeah I'm just gonna get the motherboard out and then I can work on it better Wish me bit was magnetic. <laughs> it's the only problem with it. Fantastic, but it's not magnetic. Sorry about the dog barking, guys. It's my neighbor's dog. It's one of those dogs that there's a squirrel in the tree and it farts. It just goes mental. Oops, I forgot the fan. And I'm missing one somewhere. There it is behind the GPU heat sink. There's always one in there. There's <laughs> always one. There we go. And that's the Xbox motherboard app. What I want to start doing now guys is start taking a look at the power button. Um, now I already know how the power button works on the Xbox. It actually goes through a pull-up resistor that pulls it to the 3.3 volt rail. And then when that button gets grounded, the SMC, which is this chip here on pin 18, recognizes that and then turns on the Xbox or turns off the Xbox depending on what state the Xbox is in. Um, now what I've got is I've got my multimeter on continuity. Hopefully you can hear that. So I'm going to trace out the actual power input. So we know pin 2 is the button input. So it should go to the right hand side of this resistor. And it does. We should go to the right hand side of this pull up. Yep, that's okay. 
and on the opposite side the current limit resistor here we should get 1k and we're getting 1k so this part of the circuit's okay uh, what I want to do now is I need to go on the left hand side of this current limit resistor and I need to check it to see if it goes to pin 18 so what we're on 14 15 16 17 18 ah ah I think we've got something guys I think we've got something there's no connection my multi yet yeah, still on continuity 15 16 17 18 no no connection there's your problem right there now I'll show you the the same but this is for the eject button now the eject button goes to pin 5 and it's this resistor just above it so I'm gonna go here better if I do it this way like that you can see it better and if I go to pin 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 now can you hear that that's my multimeter beeping so there's a connection there but if we go down to the power button in fact I'll run the probe along all the pins and it should be pin 18 so 15 16 17 18 and there's no connection there whatsoever so that's the problem right there guys there's a break in the trace what I want to show you is the connection between this resistor here on the on the, the left hand side and the connection between the SMC I want to see show you the connection because there actually is a connection there but if you take a look at it it's in the mega ohms and I've got my multimeter on the resistance setting and I'm gonna go to the, the left hand side of this resistor and I'm gonna go to pin 18 so 15 16 17 18 which is there and you can see hopefully you can see that that's up in the mega ohm 55 mega ohms so there is a connection there but it's up in the mega ohms uh, and it shouldn't be it should be a, a straight short there and I found the issue um, I'll explain what's going on here is our current limit and resistor this limits the current uh, coming to the SMC obviously because it's being pulled up to the 3.3 volt rail so we go for a little current, current limit and resistor I'll explain the circuit later we go through a little via here I don't know where you can see it. it's tiny it's got the traces on this board are so small it's unreal we go through a little via here that goes off to the opposite side of the board it comes out here and it snakes all the way along the board up here up here comes up here goes through the board in this area here through via to the SMC underneath pin 18 but let me see if I can show you what the problem is I'm going to tilt the board up so you can see it better and the problem is just here this is the trace here comes right from here this via just here comes along the outside of the board and the problem is just there where you see this number seven so and I don't know whether you can see that but if we follow that bottom trace we're following the bottom trace we come along we come along and boom there it is hopefully you can see that there's one two and there's another tiny little one there as well so yeah we've got some corrosion just there that's uh, killing that button now what I'll do guys is I'll see if I can get my camera and get a better photo of that um, and put it in the video but yeah that's the issue right there we've got a corroded trace now it's still connected so that corrosion's not completely gone through that trace but what I suspect's happening is it's probably acting more of a resistor now than it is a trace because we've seen it it's up in the mega ohms it's 
it shouldn't be doing that you know it shouldn't be up in the mega ohms it should be a, a straight short now lucky for us this is not going to be too difficult to fix because what i can do is i can run a wire from the bottom side where that resistor is that current limit resistor on the left hand side i can run it all the way around here and come to this point i'll get my pointy thing so you can see it come to this point here and that should connect that dodgy trace back up again so yeah i'm going to crack on with that unbelievable bloody corrosion eh
Jobs are good. And that's that trace repaired. Let's see if we've now got continuity between the left hand side of this resistor and pin 18 of the SMC system management controller. So 15, 16, 17, 18, and there we go. We got continuity. So that's that fixed. Now, just off camera guys, what I did was I ran a wire from this point here to this point here. The reason for that, the, the trace that goes along the board here is a little bit discolored. You may see that on the macro uh, image I'll show you later on. Um, so what I did is I just preemptive striked it. You know, I just run a wire uh, just to make sure because the last thing I want is like, you know, five six weeks later i get another phone call it's gone again <laughs> so i thought you know what why i'm here i'll take care of that it checked out on continuity perfectly fine but you know might as well do it while i'm in here save my ass later if it goes wrong what i want to quickly do now is show you better what that trace looks like because thankfully someone has scanned the xbox 1.4 motherboard uh, and it's down to a person called Love Megahertz. So thanks to, to them, I can show you this trace uh, a lot better. So here's our front panel connector just here. Pin one is ground. Pin two is the power button. So if we follow it along, the first thing that happens, you can see it gets pulled up by a 10K resistor. I'll go more into detail later on about this and how it works. Then we go through a current limit resistor then what happens is it comes out and it goes through a via to the opposite side of the board now if we go to the opposite side of the board this is where it starts to snake around the board it's, it's actually insane how long it is so if we follow it along we're going along we're going along it's going look how long it goes for it's insane <laughs> now this is where our corrosion was i've just highlighted that here we're going along we're going on we go all the way up we're still not done yet. There's that point where I soldered to, uh, to to fix the trace between the left hand side of that current limit resistor. And this point is where I fixed that broken trace. We're still going guys. <laughs> We're not finished yet. And there we go. We come up, up to this point here. We go through a via. And let me see if I can find it. It should be... Move up here. It should be up here somewhere there it is it pops back to the front side of the board comes up and goes to pin 18 of the system management controller chip this is the system management controller chip so it's a pretty long trace uh, and now i'm going to explain why the xbox powers off powers on by itself uh, and also why the button stops working after a little while what I want to do now guys is try and quickly explain why the Xbox was having the problems it was having where the power button wouldn't work um, it would turn off and then turn on by itself um, but first I want to explain how the power button works on the Xbox now if we take a look at this chip this is the system management chip this chip uh, has a number of functions 
um, it monitors the temperature sensor and then sets the fan speed it also monitors the power button and the eject button to power up the Xbox now I'm gonna go through some of the pins um, because some of them are, are very important this master clear here pin 1 um, I'll talk about that later we've got pin 8 which is VSS we've got pin 18 which is the power button sense pin we've got pin 19 which is VSS and then we've got pin 20 which is VDD power basically um, now another thing to note about this chip is this chip is on all the time from the moment you plug in the mains to the Xbox this chip is powered up uh, through a permanently on 3.3 volt rail and it's also supplying this pull up resistor here as well the, the 3.3 volt rail so these are basically on the same rail now pin 18 is the power input button and this is pretty critical so I'm going to explain how this works now this pin is active low and what that basically means is when this pin is pulled low its function is enabled so obviously in this case it's the power button now if we take a look at how the power button's wired here's our button here this is a push to make button and we then go through a pull up now this pull up resistor is critical to this circuit it's absolutely critical and like I said this is supplied by the same 3.3 volt rail that supplies the voltage for this chip and it's permanently on all the time now it's a pretty weak pull up it's a 10k pull up and it has to be a weak pull up because we're grounding this input when we push this button but it's very 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 critical to the circuit the next thing we go through is a 1k resistor this is just a limit current we don't want a lot of current to flow um, in this path here the reason for that is it's just a signal it just needs to know if it's high or low and we don't need a lot of current to flow to do that so pretty much what happens is this is active low so we push the power button this is a tactile dome button and these two contacts get shorter together this weak pull up gets overridden this gets pulled to ground and obviously we know this is active low so this input pin here on this system management controller recognizes that and sees that we push the power button so that's pretty much how the system management chip reads the power button um, what I want to do now is go on to explain why the Xbox was powering off powering on by itself so here's what I think happened with the Xbox now we saw that this trace here there was corrosion on that trace now what I think happened is that corrosion hadn't broken the trace but it was acting like a resistor um, and not just any resistor it was acting like a thermistor now a thermistor is a resistor that resistance changes with temperature all resistors resistance changes with temperature but resistors are designed to work in a certain temperature range where thermistors are specially designed to change their resistance with temperature now our resistor wasn't acting like a, a, a normal resistor normal resistors as the temperature rises the resistance falls right now this was acting more like a thermistor and not just any thermistor a PTC which stands for a positive temperature coefficient thermistor what happens there is as the temperature rises the resistance rises and I think that's what's happened to this corroded trace so here's what's happened as the temperature starts to heat up in the Xbox this corroded trace here has started acting like a thermistor a PTC positive temperature coefficient thermistor so this has started to rise in its resistance and it's going up and up and up as the Xbox heats up and it probably gets into the mega ohms and once it gets into the mega ohms 
this whole part of this circuit here just gets completely removed from the circuit. Remember when I said this pull-up resistor is so critical to this circuit because it stops any glitches on this input pin here. You remove that, you're going to have problems. So here's what happened. Temperature rises, resistance rises with this corroded trace. This whole circuit gets removed. This pull-up resistor, which is so critical, gets removed. Then what happens is this pin starts to float. Right, and you never ever want a floating pin. It's bad times when that happens. So this pin starts to float, and remember, this is the power button pin, right? So this pin starts to float. So here it is floating along, right, doing its thing. It's not it's not a logic one, it's not a logic zero, it's probably floating in between. As long as it stays above that logic zero threshold, it's perfectly fine. Doesn't matter if it's floating, as long as it stays above this logic zero threshold. But probably what happens is because this trace is so long, you saw how long it is on the board, it pretty much goes right the way around the board. Probably what happens is some capacitive coupling goes on. You've got fast acting signals going anywhere near this trace. What happens is one of those signals dips, its trailing edge just plummets to ground. And guess what's going to happen? This is floating along, floating along, and this is going to go with it. That trace suddenly plummets to ground. This goes with it. It goes below the logical threshold of a zero that this chip recognizes as a zero. So what does the system management chip do? It thinks you push the power button, so it powers off the Xbox. And that's the reason why the Xbox powers off. This resistance here gets so high, it takes out this part of the circuit this critical pull-up resistor gets pulled this input then starts to float it floats along and it's doing okay as long as it stays above this logic zero threshold it's perfectly fine it doesn't matter if it's floating but guess what it probably gets influenced by capacitive coupling from another trace somewhere that trailing edge plummets the ground this input pin goes with it it dips below the logic zero threshold that this chip recognizes as zero the system management chip goes oh they press the power button on the xbox power off the xbox and that's the reason why the xbox turns off now you may be going that's the reason why the xbox turns off but why does it turn on again i'm going to explain that next So what I want to do now is explain why the Xbox powers straight back up once you power it off. Well, that can be explained just as easily. So let's go through our scenario, right? This bad trace, this corroded trace, as the Xbox heats up, the resistance climbs and climbs and climbs, gets to the point where the whole of this circuit gets removed. That's explains why the power button doesn't work after a certain amount of time this pull-up resistor gets removed from the circuit as well that's so critical guys you want this here stops any glitching going on this gets so high to the point where this input starts to float what happens then is it's okay as long as it doesn't dip below this logic zero threshold but probably what happens is once this starts to float it gets influenced by traces near it that are fast switching and one of those traces only has to fall off a cliff its trailing edge just plummets the ground and what happens is that we go along here we go along we're floating and floating that fast acting trace plummets the ground this goes with it it dips below the logic zero threshold this chip then recognizes that and goes okay they push the power button turn off the xbox but what also happens at the same time when that happens is this chip gets reset through its master clear here, pin one. Then what happens is this boots back up into what's known as a system ready standby state. And it's basically sitting there waiting for you to push either the eject button to power on the console because you can power on the console by pressing the eject button or the power button. So it's sitting there waiting for you to do that. So let's go through the scenario. This starts to float, right? It's floating along. Some capacitive coupling trace makes this dip below 
the Logic Zero threshold. This system management controller chip sees that. It turns the Xbox off. When it does that, this chip gets reset into system ready standby. So here it is, this is coming along. As soon as we get the power off here, we get the reset of the SMC. It comes out of reset and at this point it's sitting there waiting. It's at the system ready standby stage and it's waiting here for you to push the power button or push the eject button to turn the system on, right? So at this point, we follow this up, we go up, we go up, we, we go up. Probably what's happening is as this comes out of its reset and it's in the system ready stage, is this here, it's still at a logic zero. So what the SMC thinks, the system management controller chip, this chip here thinks, you push the power button. So what does it do? It powers back on the Xbox. And that's the reason why the Xbox turns off and turns on by itself. And it's all down to this trace, this corroded trace that's acting like a thermistor. And not just any thermistor, a positive temperature coefficient thermistor where as the temperature rises, so does the resistance. And it gets to the point where it completely removes this part of the circuit. This starts to float and then you get bad times and it explains everything it explains why the power button stops working after a certain amount of time it explains why the system powers off after a certain amount of time and why it powers straight back on again and it can all be explained by this trace here this corroded trace acting like a thermistor now it took me a little bit of time to work out what was going on guys but as soon as I worked out you know what that corroded trace is acting like a, a thermistor, you know, especially a positive temperature coefficient where as the temperature rises, so does the resistance. This gets into the mega ohms, it removes all of this from the circuit and this critical pull up gets removed. And once that happens, this starts to float and then you've got bad, bad times. Because it's only a matter of time before bad things happen. And as you can see, the Xbox is put all back together again. Moment of truth, let's power on. Well, the power button's working and it's not exploded, so <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> Boot to the dash. And there we go, that's the dashboard booted up. What I'm going to do now is just spend 20 minutes, half an hour playing it. I want to get those temperatures up a little bit because uh, then I want to test it. I want to power it off through the dash like I did before and hopefully it doesn't turn back on. <laughs> So I've been playing Half-Life 2, about half an hour you can see the temperatures have gone up in the Xbox, it's moment of truth. Uh, what I want to do now is see when I power off, does it stay off or does it fire straight back up again. So let's go for it, I'm going to go for a power off. And it stayed off. Winner, winner. Another moment of truth. Can I turn it back on again with a power one? Because remember, I wouldn't do it last time. And there we go. So yeah, I think we've got this one, guys. I think I've fixed this Xbox. Um, my friend wanted me to mod this Xbox for him. But what I'm going to do, uh, just to be on the safe side, is I'm going to say, look, take it back for a week, play it for an hour, maybe a couple of hours a day. Um, just put it through its paces. Um, if everything's fine after that, of course I'll mod it for you. But yeah, I think I've got it, guys. I think that was the issue, that dodgy trace. I was acting like a thermistor, and as the temperature rose in the Xbox, it killed the power button circuit and took out that critical 
pull up uh, and then that input the power button for the SMC starts to float and then you've got bad times but yeah I think I've got it guys I think I've fixed it so yeah there you go guys hope you liked the video if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe or the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one winner winner fingers crossed it's fixed <laughs> catch you next time guys